my name is Bob Oaks. I'm the pre-engineering instructor at uh, Norman High School. Uh, I am actually employed by the Moore Norman Technology Center, but I am my classroom is here at Norman High School. Now, at the high school itself, we have five buildings. Now, they are all disconnected, so we have a five-building campus to which we kind of have to walk outside every once in a while. We've got the main building that houses the math classes, the uh, humanitarian classes, the uh, uh, language classes, and then we have the uh, orchestra and band building, we have the new arts building, we have the science building, and then we have <clears throat> this building. Now, they really don't have a name for this building, they just call it Building 900. And basically, that's the building where um, all the classes that didn't have a place are housed. So, this is my classroom, such as it is. It used to be an old uh, art classroom, and as you can see, it's made up of a lot of brick walls, a lot of windows, uh, very few uh, gypsum walls around to hang things on the wall. Uh, being brick walls, we got to be uh, very uh, on guard because things have a tendency to fall off me quite often uh, because of the, uh, uh, the budget we have to watch uh, our heating bills. So in the wintertime, it seems to be cold in here quite often. And in the summertime, it is, it is often uh, warm. So we have uh, large fluctuations in temperature and humidity. And that's one of the reasons why things on the wall have a tendency to want to fall off. Now, when I was first assigned to this classroom, we had uh, a desk, my desk, my personal desk was housed right here. And we had eight tables that we extended all the way out for that. Now, that ideally is the best type of uh, classroom to have for a career tech classroom. But when you're in a career tech classroom, you're dealing with older students. What I found after that first year was that that did not necessarily work when you're dealing with freshmen and sophomores. So, as you can see, I've reorganized the room and set it apart more like compartments, if you will. And every student in here now feels like they're part of a little niche. Now, I've organized it much like you would in a regular workplace. And each classroom has roughly around 15 students. I've divided it up into groups of three, and each group has a particular uh, supervisor, if you will, or group leader, if you will. And they coordinate with me just like I would with a supervisor out in the real world. And that's how I've organized this room. Now, if you follow me around, let's take a tour of the room such as it is. And let's take you up here in the front. <clears throat> if we have lectures and presentations in here, this is usually where it occurs, right here in the front. In the public schools here in Norman, we have what is called the infinite classroom. And it's made up of a smart board, such as you see here. And we have a little workstation here that has a computer that is actually hooked to this projector, as well as an overhead projector that we can actually have. And then we have these things here that are called lobbies. And this is where we can re work at a remote location while we're actually working things off the smart board. Now, this is ideal as far as instructional but the first thing that you'll notice that there's a safety hazard here. And that safety hazard is we have a long cord. Now, ideally, we'd like to have that cord covered up. But because this cart goes all over the room, that's almost impossible to do. So what we tried to do is we place a tripping hazard sign down here to warn everybody to, to you know, take notice of that. You know, you're going to have these cords in the way. Make sure you step over them. Now, I'm going to take, I'm going to go around uh, another part of the room here. Let's go take a look and see where I've got my safety posters, if you will. Now, ideally, I'd like to put my safety posters on a bulletin board. But as you can see, 
the brick walls present a problem. There is an issue with the technology center as well with the high school about uh, tapping into the bricks in order to hang this bulletin board. So they're not really uh, too keen on the idea of uh, mounting a bulletin board to the wall. Ideally, if I had one, I'd like to put it back here under the clock. And that would be an ideal place, and it would be easy to get to, and everybody looks at the clock, and it would be a place that everybody can see the postal materials. But in the meantime, what I've had to do is use this little area by the door. <clears throat> now, it's not the most ideal area, I understand that. But it is the area that everybody sees, because they will be walking out, and they walk in. Now, as you can see in this area right here, I have all of our safety signs and posters. And with a few uh, little things that kind of capture their attention. Now, keep in mind, I'm dealing with freshmen and sophomores, so I don't want to detail them with, with long and uh, drawn out rules and regulations on how to conduct themselves safely. So I've tried to keep it simple with just some big print that they can actually look off of and probably no more than 10 to 12 instructions that must apply in this room. And so they can refer to this as they need to. I remind them constantly about it. Now over here on the door we have our OSHA safety poster and I also have our uh, fire drill evacuation uh, a map as to where the students should go in the event of a fire drill. They also know that in the event of a tornado or in a lockdown, we also line up against this wall here. Now, I've debated about whether putting any type of map up here because it's within the room. It's the, they don't really exit the room whatsoever. And in the lockdown, the students go into the closet, which is located over this area here. Now, I'm going to walk over here and I want to show you our little work table that we have. And uh, this is probably where, if we are going to do any, using any power tools whatsoever, and mind you, we don't use them very much, if at all. Uh, probably the most ornate we get on any type of power equipment, or at least something that's electrical in nature, is a glue gun. And this is where it takes place. Now, this is where we have our protective gloves, if you will, mostly for gluing. And we also uh, have safety glasses. And each student has a safety glass that's mounted into 15, 16 bins here for each of these glasses. Ideally, this is not the best situation, at least as far as I'm concerned. Ideally, I'd like to give each of my students a set of their own glasses. In the event that uh, someone may have a, a, a soreness in the eyes or something like that, that they won't pass any disease on with having to share these glasses. But uh, if ninth and tenth graders have a problem keeping track of their pencils, I would imagine they would have even worse time trying to keep track of safety glasses. Uh, ideally, we would probably should have some type of a cleaning chemical or something that we can clean these glasses off after every use. Unfortunately, uh, that is something we don't have on hand. Now, let's step over here. This is the table that we actually use when we uh, are performing our gluing and using power tools of any type. Uh, now, right now, I have on this table uh, our first aid kit which I've located here. Ideally, this is a, a mountable kit. As you can see, I've got some mounting points that I can actually mount this to the wall. But again, because our wall is all brick and they uh, uh, have an issue with tapping anything in the walls, I keep this usually on top of our little refrigerator right here. It's safely out of the way, but in a location that they are readily aware of. <clears throat> now I also have an emergency hammer, if you will, and you know 
because we have some large windows in here. In the event that we should ever get trapped in here because of a fire, uh, or even in a lockdown situation, we can use this hammer and we can actually knock out this glass. This glass is tempered glass, and so it shouldn't uh, break like normal glass does. This will make it break into a million pieces. Now again, this is made to mount to the wall, but because of our issues with that, I also keep this down here so there's readily access to that. Now, on this table also, I have my material safety data sheets that I keep track of in this little notebook. And I have my tool inventory and VEX hardware sheets. And this keeps track of all of the tools, where they're located, as well as our VEX hardware that we use to build our robots with. Now, typically, I store those behind my desk, which is right here. That way I can have easy access to them at all times. Now because of this classroom being the way it is, it's not like a regular uh, career tech classroom like you would see in, in the construction field, in carpentry or in electrical area or plumbing areas such as that. <clears throat> I do not have a tool bin uh, or a tool crib of any type to keep tools. Uh, for the tools that we use in this classroom, this is my toolbox. And as you can see, I've got all my pliers, vice grips, and anything that has anything to do with clamping in this top drawer. I have got uh, my electrical tools, hacksaws, in my second drawer that I keep. And I usually am pretty strict about which drawers I keep these in. The, the uh, students know where they are. I also have clamps in this drawer along with some Allen wrenches. And then I've got my quick grip clamps down in the bottom drawer. And this all fits very, very nicely. Up here, I have my socket sets, my screwdriver sets. I do have a uh, cordless drill. And I do have a set of bits that go along with that. Now, in this classroom, this is probably the extent of the, uh, of the tools that we'll be using. Now, because we don't have any standalone power equipment like band saws, or drill presses or any of that type, we don't have any electrical conduits in here that uh, really have a separate turned off switch or a dedicated circuit. So that's never been a worry here. We don't have any uh, circuit breaker for that. So uh, safety wise, that's never been a concern. If anything, probably the only piece of equipment that we do use and have used is this uh, structural stress analyzer. <clears throat> which we've used in the uh, Principles of Engineering class. Now, we've used this to do tensile tests on metal samples to break them, and we plot our curves to show how those breaks go. Uh, and we've also created trusses, if you will, and we've actually crushed them to see what kind of forces that uh, would be applied before they break. So this would be, ideally, uh, something that doesn't necessarily have to have a dedicated circuit with it. Our regular 110 circuitry that we have right here is perfectly capable of handling this. So this is the pre-engineering program here at the high school. Now keep in mind, we have consolidated a lot of it. And to some extent, we have limited the use of what we are, should be doing if we follow this curriculum with fidelity. 